Hello to all of you. This is Dr. Tawal Mehta and today we are going to discuss evaluating the performance of machine learning algorithms. The best way to evaluate the performance of an algorithm, algorithm would be to make the predictions for the new data. The second best way is to use techniques from statistics called the resampling methods that allow you to make accurate estimates for how well your algorithm will perform on a new data set. Let us take one example. A teacher has trained his students on some MCQs. Now, what will happen if the same MCQs are asked in the exam or in the test? Performance of the student will be best. So, which is the another way to evaluate the performance of the students? The another method is by testing them on a new MCQs. This means that once the algorithm has been trained, we should provide the new data set for testing purpose. Imagine an algorithm that remembers every observation it is shown during the training. If you evaluate a machine learning algorithm on the same data set, then the algorithm would have a perfect score on the training data set. But the predictions it made on a new data, data would, be, would be terrible. This is known as overfitting. We must evaluate our machine learning algorithms on new data that is not used to train the algorithm. Four different techniques for evaluating the performance of the algorithm are first, train and test sets, two, k-fold cross-validation, three, live one out cross-validation, four, repeated random test train splits. The first method is split into trace train and test set. The simplest method that we can use to evaluate the performance of the machine learning algorithm is to use different training and testing data sets. We can take our original data set and split it into two parts. Train the algorithm on the first part, make the predictions on the second part, and evaluate the predictions against the expected result. The size of the split can depend on size and specifics of your data set, although it is common to use 67% of the data for training and the remaining 33% for testing. It is not necessary that you follow this rule. You can also take 70% and 30% or 80% and 20%. The advantage of this technique is it is useful when the algorithm you are investing, investigating is slow to train. The disadvantage of this technique is it can have a very high variance between the training data set and the testing data set. This means that the differences in the training and test data set can result in meaningful differences in the estimate of the accuracy. Now how we can do this, let's see in Jupyter Notebook. import pandas from pandas import read underscore csv i'll just increase the size from here from escalon import model underscore selection from escalon dot linear underscore model import logistic regression you will have to specify the file name and you will have to give the path where your data set is located here we are using pima indian diabetes this data set is very readily available on the Kaggle data set, Kaggle website. The names of the variable are specified here. So it starts with zero column. This is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The eighth column is the target column or the target variable or the dependent variable. Data frame is equal to read underscore CSV. File name has to be specified names is equal to names means we are specifying here the variable names array is equal to data frame dot this data frame dot values x is equal to array colon comma zero zero two eight so we are selecting all the variables in this x for y purpose y is equal to array colon this colon means applicable to all rows comma eight that is the last target variable is class. So here the target variable class means a person is having a diabetes or not having a diabetes. Test size 0.33. We are saying that 0.66 will be for the training data set and 0.33 for the testing data set. We will specify the seed here. Sp seed that is a random seed is specified for reproducing the same result. It means that suppose if I specify another seed it will generate another accuracy level because it will run the algorithm in another way. 
So to produce the same result, we specify the seed here. X underscore train, comma, X underscore test, Y underscore train, comma, Y underscore test, model underscore selection dot train underscore test underscore split. X is this X, which we'll be getting it from here. Y, we will get, be getting it from here. Test underscore size is this test size, comma, random state is a seed, which we have specified as seven. Model is equal to logistic regression, model dot fit X train, Y train. So our model will be, our model will be trained on the basis of the training data set. And this model will be tested with the help of testing data set. So result is equal to model dot score X test, comma, Y test, print, round bracket, accuracy, colon, percentage dot 3F, percentage, percentage. I, by specifying this way, it means that we want the accuracy till three decimal. Percentage, round bracket, result into 100 percentage. So this result will be generated in the percentage. When we will run this, uh, what I'll get is the accuracy is 78.74 percentage of this algorithm on the testing data set, which is quite good. This is the first method to evaluate the performance of machine learning algorithms. Now let's see the second method. The second method is k-fold cross-validation. Cross-validation is an approach that you can use to estimate the performance of the machine learning algorithm with less variance than a single train test set split. It works by splitting the data set into the k parts. Each split of the data is called a fold. The algorithm is trained on k-1 folds with one held back and tested on the held back fold. This is repeated so that each fold of the data set is given a chance to be held back test set. After running the cross validation, you end up with the K different performance scores that you can summarize using a mean and standard deviation. The result is more reliable estimate of the performance. Summarize using a mean and a standard deviation. The result is more reliable estimate of the performance of the algorithm on new data. It is more accurate because the algorithm is trained and evaluated multiple times on different data. For modest size, size data sets in thousands or tens of thousands of records, K values of 3, 5 and 10 are common. Now let's see how it's working. If you consider the gray line to be the all data, we will split the data into training and testing data set. Then we will take 10 cross 10 folds. That is the data is folded 10 times. Here it is shown five times. Then in the first split, the blue one is considered to be the testing data and the green one is the training data set. In the second split, now the fold two will become the testing data and the remaining one will become the training data set. This will continue till split five and we will get the final evaluation. So this is a way we do k-fold cross validation. Now, how we can do this? Let's see in Jupyter Notebook. From pandas import read underscore csv. From escalon dot model underscore selection import k-fold. From escalon dot model underscore selection import cross underscore well. That is a validation underscore score. From escalon dot linear underscore model import logistic regression. Then we will specify the file name and we will give the path where our data set is located. Then we will specify the names and the variable names. Then data frame is equal to read underscore CSV file name comma names is equal to names. Array is equal to data frame dot values. So the array will be constructed on the basis of this data. X is equal to array colon comma zero is to eight. Y is equal to array colon comma eight. New underscore instances is len X. How many instances are we have to consider is len X. Seed is seven, which I have already explained. K fold is equal to N splits is equal to number of folds we want to consider comma Suffle is equal to true, comma, random state is equal to seed. 
model is equal to logistic regression solver is equal to newton dot cg there is a slight correction in the code instead of num instances we'll be using num folds is equal to 10 so n underscore splits is equal to num folds 10 folds we are specifying supple is equal to true random state state is seed model is equal to logistic regression solver newton cg results is equal to cross validation score model x and y cv is equal to k4 this one now print the accuracy for which this is a code accuracy is colon percentage dot 3f percentage percentage and then we will write results dot mean round bracket results dot standard it's a standard division which we want and when we will run the code we will get the results as 77 point 604 percentage accuracy sorry it is 77.216 accuracy for this code it means that our algorithm is performing uh 76 percent with classification accuracy of 77 percentage on the testing data next is leave out one cross validation one can configure cross validation so that the size of the fold is one. K is set to the number of observations in your data set. This variation of cross validation is called leave one out cross validation. The result is large number of performance measures that can be summarized in an effort to give a more reasonable estimate of the accuracy of a model on unseen data. A disadvantage is it can be computationally more expensive procedure than K fold cross validation. So actually what we are doing is we will remove one observation and then we will train and test. So this is repeated for n iterations. So one observation is removed and on that basis, we carry out, leave out one cross validation. Now, how we can do this? Let's see in Jupyter Notebook. Import pandas from SKLN, import model selection from SKLN dot linear model, import logistic regression. Then we will specify the file name as usual. Then we will give the names of the variable. Again, we will create the data frame. Then we will create the array. Then we will create the X. Then we will create Y. Now numfuls is equal to 10, seed is equal to seven. Leave out cross validation. We are creating LOOCV. Model underscore selection dot leave one out. Model is equal to logistic regression solver Newton dot CG. Results is equal to cross validation score. Model we will get from here. X we will get from here. Y we will get from here. And CV is equal to LOC CV. Then print. This is a command for printing the results which we have already discussed. So what I get is accuracy of 77%. This means that our algorithm is working with an accuracy of 77 percentage on the testing data, which is considered to be the quite good. Next comes the supple split cross validation. One more matter. Another variation on k-fold cross validation is to create a random split of the data like train dress split described above. But the repeat, we repeat the process of splitting and evaluation of the algorithm multiple times like cross validation. This has a speed of using 10 trace split and the reduction in the variance in the estimate performance of k-fold cross validation. A downside is that the repetitions may include much of the same data in the train or test split from run to run, introducing the redundancy into the evaluation. Let's see how we can do this in Jupyter Notebook. From pandas import read underscore CSV. From SKLN dot model selection import suffle split. From SKLN dot model underscore selection import cross validation score. From SKLN dot linear underscore model import logistic regression. You will have to specify the file name and you will have to give the path where your data set is located. Then you will have to give the names of the variable which are there in your data set. You will create the data frame. 
then you will create the array on the basis of the data frame which you have imported. So array is equal to data frame dot values x x is equal to array you create the array from here and then y number of splits which you specify are 10 test size is 0.33 means 0.66 goes for training and 0.33 for testing seed which we have specified is seven basically seed is specified to reproduce the same results k fold so here make sure that now you specify shuffle split so shuffle split is number of splits so this number of splits are 10 from here. Test size is 0.33. Random state seed is 7. Model is equal to logistic regression. Solver which we are using is Newton CG. Results is equal to cross validation score. Model X, Y, CV is a K fold which we will consider. This is a code for printing the results. The classification accuracy which we have achieved by using shuffle split cross validation is 76.53 percentage this means that our algorithm is performing with the classification accuracy of 76.53 percentage on the testing data set what are the suggestions when to use which technique generally k-fold cross validation is a gold standard for evaluating the performance of machine learning algorithm on unseen data with k set to 3 5 or 10 Using a train test split is good for speed when using a slow algorithm and produces a performance estimates with lower bias when using large data sets. Techniques like leave one out cross validation and repeated random splits can be used useful intermediates when trying to balance variance in the estimated performance, model training speed and data set size. All these codes are given in the book Machine Learning with Mastery Machine Learning Mastery with Python written by Jason Brownlee. For more videos on machine learning using Python, kindly subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter. Please don't forget to press the like button. You can see my playlist in which I have already uploaded many videos of machine learning using Python. Thank you.